had a very productive day so far listening to the other speakers. Well, I'm here today to talk about mobile apps. So I assume most of you are familiar with the iPhone, and um, some of you are definitely familiar with uh, Google's Android operating system. So basically, um, as the, as, um, the co-founder of the Philippine Mobile Developers Group, we support efforts and we encourage students, professionals to study and learn how to develop apps for the mobile market. And I'm here today to answer three questions. First is, I mean, why, how, where? Okay, so this is an example of an outstanding mobile application for several platforms. So have you guys heard of Angry Birds? So for those who have an iPhone or an iPad or even an Android or a Blackberry, Angry Birds is a very, very successful game. It was developed, it was released um, last year, December 2009. Its developer is Rovio, Rovio Mobile. They were founded in 2003 by students like you. They joined a uh, competition, uh, an application development competition which they won. After winning, they sold the app and they started a company called uh, which eventually became Rovio. They made a couple of games, and but before Angry Birds, none of them were really a major hit. But when Angry Birds was released, wow, it became a massive hit. So Angry Birds was is an example of an outstanding mobile game for iPhone. It is available for the for Apple's iOS devices, which is the iPhone and iPad, Nokia 89, N900 Nemo, Palm Web OS, and uh, Google Android. So today, this paid application has been downloaded 6.5 million times. Wow, can you imagine that? This small application where you fling birds, is a catapult towards pigs. Yeah, it sounds very really sound silly, honestly, but this game is really a massive game. Okay. Another example is Google Jump. In Google Jump, you control a creature known as Doodle the Doodler. There's a small creature that you control him by moving your phone around and he jumps from platform to platform. So very simple concept. The graphics are retro or um, they, they are maybe you can even consider them cute in our set in our um, native tongue. But so in this this game is also hugely successful. It's been downloaded 5 million times. This is a 99 cent game. So if you do the math, it's 99 cents times 5 million. So its revenue is roughly $5 million. A little less, of course. This one is Flipboard, which is a social magazine for the iPad. So it, it, um, if you log in using Facebook or Twitter, plus other sources that the app includes, you can read your Facebook uh, Facebook posts of your friends, the, the Twitter, the tweets that come into your Twitter stream in a magazine format. So it's very, very beautiful. <coughs> what you try, it's like uh, nothing that's ever come before. So it's an outstanding mobile application. It's a top 10 free app for the iPad, July 2010. So it's, um, it's free, but because of the number of downloads, the company who developed it has, has gotten huge exposure because of it. This one is for the Android, it's called Robo Defense. So some of the some of my friends who are Android users, they really get addicted to this game. So it's a simple tower defense game. It's the, arguably the most popular tower defense game for the Android. It's done by Lumis Labs, an indie developer. So most of the, most of the apps I've shown you are done by indie developers who started out just like you and me. We studied it, whether in our spare time or because of our work, and we made apps. So. Definitely, um, it, it, it pays to, um, hard work pays off for these guys. The free version of Robo Defense has been downloaded approximately 11 million times, while the paid version has been downloaded around 500,000 times. So it's a still a big hit. Anyways, here. And the last app that I want to show to you is Fixing. It's a photo editor for the Android device, yeah. Very, uh, very cute. So, imagine in the palm of your hand, you 
you can edit your photos. You can add um, those funny special effects. And, and you can even tweak the brightness, the contrast. Some things that you can only do on the desktop or laptop a few years back, you can now do in the palm of your hand. Pixie was developed, uh, was released in October 2008 by Shiny Power Software. And since then, it's been the free version has been downloaded 4.5 million times. And the paid one is 100,000 times. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So as I said, there are three questions that I'm going to attempt to answer today. Why, how, and where? Why develop mobile apps? How do we develop mobile apps? And finally, where can you get help to develop mobile apps? Okay. Why develop mobile apps? Basically, um, basically popular mobile platform blog, communities dominate brands. They released a, uh, he posted uh, the, the blog had an entry in February 2010. As of that day, there are 4.6 billion mobile phone subscriptions in use on a planet of 6.8 billion people. That means that roughly two out of every three people has a mobile phone in the world. Of course, this figure could be skewed a little because some have more than one. But still, that's an astounding figure. That's definitely more than cars, more than PCs, even more than credit cards. Not this many people have credit cards, but this many people have mobile devices. Whether it be smartphones, feature phones, or the regular mobile phone. Smartphone, according to Morgan Stanley, in a study they released in June 2010, smartphones will overtake PCs in 2012. In other words, they estimate that by 2012, there will be more people using smartphones than PCs. Wow! So if you're to base, if you're to write an app, and, you're going to, and you want people to use your app, whether you want to make money off of it, or you want to make a name out of it, making apps. If you believe these studies, it's better that you start developing apps for mobile platforms rather than the PC. The PC is not dead, definitely not, and there are still many uses. But by 2012, that's two years from now, smartphones will outnumber PCs. Another study, Research to Guidance, another research firm, in March 2010 said that in 2009, that's last year, there were 100 million plus smartphone users worldwide. Not bad. But by 2013, they estimate 1 billion smartphone users. That's one out of seven people. Because the UN projects that will be 7 billion in the world by 2013. That's one out of seven people will be using a smartphone. Wow. I mean, amazing, right? And so far, here's an also an amazing figure. There were 175, 170 plus million smartphone sales in 2009. But so far in 2010, or 270, they estimate by the end of the year, 55% growth. The smartphone platform is growing fast, definitely. So now, that's hardware. How about software? Which is the gist of what we're talking about right now. Last year, smartphone apps reached $1.7 billion in revenue. So far, that's the whole year, 2009. As of August this year, that's like eight months, $2.2 billion revenue. So two -thir only roughly two-thirds of the year has passed, and it's already overtaken last year's figures and then some. And based on an earlier study, it could reach $15 billion by 2013. That's incredible. I mean, this is a market that's going to grow, and I really wish that 
we could all be part of this. So $4.5 billion in revenue in 2009, estimated $25 billion in 2015, based on another book um, research paper released in August this year. $7 billion downloads in 2000, that's last year, estimated $50 billion by 2012. So these figures are amazing. Let me, without looking at the figures, without um, even understanding, I mean, without, without even um, having a basis for comparison, I'm sure you realize that this mobile development thing is not something that we should overlook. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure what you guys are studying right now here or in your respective universities. But in your free time, I definitely encourage you to start looking into mobile apps. Trust me, I mean, it's, it's not the next best thing. It's already here, but it's going to explode in some ways that we can't even imagine. But of course, it's not just about the money. Definitely not. It's about the exposure, about the passion to help as many people as possible with your software. You make your software free, it's really useful, people will use it, you help them. So even if you don't make any money from it, the very fact that you can touch so many people's lives with an app that you made worldwide, not just the people beside you or the people in the same country, but worldwide, they'll download your app, They'll use it, they'll leave positive reviews. That makes a good feeling here. And trust me, once you've experienced that, it's like, it validates the very reason why you're studying computer science, why you want to program, why you want to develop apps. But of course, there's always the first step. And that's the next question is how? How do we begin this mobile application development? Well, first, you have to choose what platform you want to use. There are many choices, not just the, the iPhone or Google's Android. But first and foremost is the iOS App Store. That's Apple. There's also the Android market. Blackberry App World, Nokia's OB Store, Palm App Catalog, and the Windows Marketplace for mobile. Here are a few facts about these app stores, just to put things in perspective. The iOS App Store opened in July 2008, two years and three months ago, or two months ago. Since as of September this year, there are 250,000 apps and 6.5 billion downloads. Amazing, I mean, in just a little over two years. The Android market, October 2008, as of July this year, 80,000 apps, 1 billion downloads. BlackBerry App World, April 2009, 10,000 apps available as of September. In Nokia's recent um, conference, they announced that their OB Store, which was opened in May 2009, roughly 1.4 million apps are being downloaded every single day. 1.4 million apps every day are being downloaded. Can you imagine that? Wow. So that's the first thing. You choose what platform you want. It really depends on what's your preference. Because each of these platforms have their different languages, different frameworks, and different devices. And of course, different tools. So for iOS or Apple, you download the SDK and you need to use a Mac. For Android, BlackBerry, and Paul, you download Eclipse, which you can use on the three major desktop platforms. For uh, Nokia, you download the Cute SDK, which you can also use on the three major platforms. And of course, Windows Phone, which is you download the developer tools and you can use it on Windows. So you have lots of choices. Lots of choices. It, it really depends on what you want. I honestly believe that being 
platform agnostic, I mean our organization being platform agnostic, we want to encourage you to choose your own platform. Don't think about the money, don't think about the number of downloads, think about what, which platform you really want to support. And then devices. If you choose to develop iOS apps, these can run on the iPhone, the iPad, or the iPod Touch. If you choose Android, wow, well, there are so many choices. You have devices from HTC, Samsung, Motorola, LG, Dell, and other OEMs. BlackBerry, as long as your BlackBerry runs on version 4.2 and higher, by all means, download the developer tools and developer for the platform. Miko, Symbian, Mimo have their also have their own devices. Symbian be currently the number one smartphone pla smartphone platform still up to now. So there are lots of choices there. And then you have Palm Web OS and Windows Phone 7, which is the upcoming version of Windows Mobile. So when it comes to devices, you have a lot of choices as well. Especially if you choose platforms like Android or Symbian, there are low cost alternatives and there are more expensive alternatives. So if you're going to start, here's a, and you invest in a test device, find out how it works, and then make apps for it. Okay. The final question is where to get help. And that's what we're here for. We're the Philippine Mobile Developers Group. There's not a formal organization where there's a president, a vice president, no, we're just a group of people who are passionate about developing apps for mobile platforms. So you can join, you can subscribe to our Google group, check us out on Facebook, or follow us, follow our discussions on Twitter. And don't worry, I mean, we're all noobs here in a sense, because even though mobile de development has been around for nearly a decade, it's only recently that it's really taken off and gotten the attention of the public. So it's not too late to start. On the contrary, it is the perfect time to start mobile development. The perfect time. So even, even though you, don't, you won't study this in school, or even though in some instances you're already studying a different language, I highly encourage you to start studying mobile development. Just to let you know, um, you don't really need a background in computer science. For example, I mean, maybe some of the attendees here are computer science or computer engineering students. You can start too. Just like me, I, was, I, I did not study computer science or engineering in college. I started as a hobbyist on my own and develop apps. So it's never too late to start. At the same time, no matter what platform you choose, at the end of the day, it's what you want to do, what platform you choose. And we're here to help you pursue your choice and make, make yourself successful, whether financially or have a good feeling inside that you're helping people with your free app. So, so there, I mean, if you have any questions, um, now's the time to ask. Um, my colleagues, Charo and Dale, also help um, answer some questions that you may have. So the, the floor is open for questions. <laughs>